How cool would it be to have a Prius home theater? That is a suggestion that a viewer from the United Kingdom sent me and I responded that is a fantastic idea and I got to work on it. So I'm going to design a home theater for you. This you can put in your car camper, van camper, RV. So I'm going to design this right now for my Rover SUV and uh, when I get my Prius back in five weeks I will design it and fit it to the Prius. So uh, kind of a medium sized space to a small space. So these are the interesting bits and pieces of it. So I did a lot of research on the video system and I decided on this cool cube video projector. Now there's a lot of other projectors out there and I spent a good bit of time looking into them. So what I'm going to do instead of filling up time on different options, um, if you go to my website PriusStealthCamper.com below, I will have a listing of the other uh, possibilities that you might want to use that have more features and a little more money. My budget for the projector was $150 and so I had to kind I got some of the features I wanted I didn't get some of the features I wanted but this seemed to be a good balance for me and I was happy with it so this is the AXA Pico projector what I like one of the really the selling point for me was the higher resolution most of these are pretty low resolution this one's 720p native but it'll do the the um, 1080 now the battery life it does have a battery in it but you have to put it on eco mode and we'll go over the settings on these because um, it's got some quirks on it 80 inches is pushing it you, this this is low lumens so this is not something you can use with the with much light coming in you really need to pull your we'll put your window inserts in pull your curtain and make sure it's pretty dark if you want to use it at 80 80 inches in your home or something it's going to need to be completely dark so if you want there are some of the specs on it you can check that over so it's 50 lumens so what i liked was the resolution and i've been playing with it the color settings out of the box are not good so i've been practicing with those and getting that where i like the colors and so i will put all those settings too i'll put that on the website too so let's look what comes with this in the box you get this cool stand here and we may end up using this because you can set it to where it will rotate the image. You can also shoot it off a mirror to get more throw distance and you can reverse the image. So that'll be a nice feature. One feature it does not have that I really would have liked to have is the keystoning. So what that means is keystoning means if your camera is angled, you can set it so that the image is not tilted. This does not have it. So what I'm gonna need to do is get it fairly in up and down it needs to be about the middle of the screen so that may be a little tricky but I've got some brackets to try to work on that with. What this comes with also is the charging cord that plugs into the back and it is 5 volts. You will need a high amp USB plug and I will show you one of those and I'll put a link on the website on where to get those. Um, you can't just use a standard USB it will not be enough power and when you watch this you're going to need to have it plugged in and you're going to need to have it on um, standard or eco because this uses a good bit of power and when you run out of power it'll shut off and that generally is going to happen right at the end of a movie. So this you can have plugged in and as long as you have it on low, um, on standard or eco and have this plugged in, um, it's, it'll, it'll keep running. The next thing it comes with is the remote control. It is critical that you do not lose the remote control. There are no settings on this to use except for on and off. And so that is not going to help you if you lose this. Now, they do have a nice customer service company here. They send a card here with the phone number. And they also have a website. I found the website good. You can download the manual here if you'd like to see that. Um, so if you do lose the remote, you can order another one. The other thing is some of these were shipped with dead batteries in the remote. So I did have to buy another battery. If it comes and you can't use the remote, you might have a dead battery. I believe it's a 20... 25 CR 2025. What also comes with it is an AV cord that plugs into the back and then you can run like a an old DVD player or something like that into it that has uh, video and left and right input. So on the back here we have the headphone jack. Now if you're just going to be using this yourself you could just plug your headphones right into the back which is what I plan to do. Um, just in the headphone jack that's going to save you some power. It does have a one watt speaker in there. It's okay. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Um, you'll need a micro HDMI cable and then the USB is for doing, uh, you can put your USB stick in there and you can put movies on the stick 
You can also put pictures and things like that, and you can also upgrade the software through here. Or you can put the uh, micro SD card right in here, and there's your on off button. That's where the AV goes in. Now, if you want, if you have more than one person or you want to put out some really good sound, I found this was a great feature. This is the CANS 808, and this is a rechargeable 5 volt USB rechargeable speaker, and it really I checked a lot of them, and some of them that are a lot bigger didn't have as good a sound. This thing's pretty weighty. Battery lasts a long time. It recharges on 5 volt USB. Comes with a cable. You just club, put the cable in line in, and then you can put the other end of the cable into the headphone jack. I used that. It worked really well. Put out quite a lot of sound. If you're going to run it out of an Apple product, uh, iPhone, you're going to need this adapter. And this plugs into your lightning port and gives you a standard HDMI. So then you're going to need a cable to go from standard HDMI to mini HDMI. I have, well, I actually couldn't find one. You can order that them so that it has one of each end. This is just a standard HDMI cord. And then I got an adapter to plug into here, which takes it from standard HDMI to a mini HDMI right here. Now if you're Android, you, I'll put links to all the cables and fittings. If you have Android, you should be able to get a mini a Android plug to a mini HDMI direct. So need to be careful and get the right cables. It does not come with any cables for HDMI because of the different options. Let's talk about the screen we're going to build. This is the material I found. And uh, I know one of the materials I suggested last time for the window covers, well, people were having a hard time finding this in Walmart. This was at my Walmart within the fabric section, but it comes on a roll, and this is actually called white blackout fabric. One side is kind of uh, yellowish. This side, the lighting doesn't really show it, but you can see it right. This one side is rather yellowish, and one side is really quite bright. It has a very fine texture to it, and light cannot pass through it. And so this is going to make a great fabric to put uh, uh, over our backing to make a screen. Now, what are we going to use for the backing? Well, you know, I love corrugated vinyl. It has every use under the sun. This stuff is awesome. I use, <laughs> you can buy it at Lowe's. You can buy it a lot of places. It, you'll, uh, shine shops carry it. Um, but it's got the little, looks like a cardboard box, but made out of vinyl. So uh, it goes under different names, but I call it corrugated vinyl. We're going to use this, and I, I get, you can get the big sheet and at Lowe's over where they cut glass. If you just need a small piece, you can go over into the sign department, and they have smaller pieces. If you could also go to a sign shop, and I think they have access to the stuff that's all the way, all the way, all the way up to f uh, four feet by eight feet. This is the barcode and the information on the fabric from Walmart, so you might... I don't know if this has some useful numbers on it, but maybe they can look it up for you if they're having trouble finding it. Maybe they can order it for you. It's about $6 a yard. I went ahead and got two yards. I don't need anywhere near that, but I got two yards in case I messed up. The, one of the tricky things we're going to have to do is fabricate a way to hang this from the ceiling. So I went over to Lowe's to the section in the lumber department where they have hangers and things for rafters and roofing. They have a lot of metal things. And I like these because they're, they're fairly thin and easy to work with and bend. I like the looks of these because I'm going to be trying just to zip tie the thing together, but you could potentially, you know, have a slide mount or something here. So that looked interesting. I got two of those. And so um, I'm going to be, this, these are also in the same place. These are brackets. So this is the long bracket. There's information about that one. I like this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these pliers and I can bend it into all sorts of shapes. And if you don't have to cut it, I think what will happen is if you just keep bending, bending, you can snap it and, and cut it to length. So I got two of these long ones. And then I got two of these shorter ones right there. And then I also picked up just some angle brackets, something easy to tuck in, let's say, to the overhead light or maybe a sunroof trim or something like that. So I've got that to use. You'll also need some zip ties, either white or black. These are going to help hold our cables and everything together. So let's look at our design plan. So here's our projector. We're going to maybe use a tripod, use some steel pieces, and we're going to fit this in between the light fixture, uh, the reading light, and probably the sunroof, something between there, and we're going to need to drop it down some. We'll need to run the power cord. We'll need to run five volts up there. USB. We'll need to have the 
HDMI cable coming down to plug into the phone and then either earphones or the speaker. If you want to do the speaker, you could even manage to make a mount for that and attach it up there right next to this. Um, I'm going to start off with just the earphones and that's going to save some space. So then we're going to project it onto somewhere in the back and this will be, it'll be our board and then we're going to make uh, kind of like a slip cover that's going to go over the board out of our material and for that we're going to need some Velcro so that we can remove it if it needs to be cleaned or if we may make, need to make a new one or it gets messed up. Uh, so we'll have that. So here's my initial design that I'm thinking about. What I've done is just taken the tripod and I have zip tied it to these two brackets. The idea being I like this because if we want to tilt it left, right, whatever, um, that will work out well. Also what I'm thinking here is this is movable. Probably we'll start with one of the long ones, attach it to the ceiling, and then when we need to do this mount, we can run, put it over like this, squeeze the legs together, and we should have something that will hang from the ceiling. Hopefully with the pressure from the ceiling, it won't swing much. Now, if, if it needs to come down longer, my next thought would be to take one of these and replace that here and then bend it up here somewhere so we can get a lot more drops. So I think I'm going to start with this. One fun thing about doing these videos is every once in a while, a project just comes together way more simple than I thought it would be. So here I've got the projector. It's upside down hanging from those two brackets. So I just, it worked out just as planned. So all I do is I can untuck this one and untuck this one and the whole thing will come down. And what I was able to do was I took this long bracket and I just worked with it and worked with it with my pliers and one end straight and I got a hook on the other. So what I did is I'm sticking it through here, hooking it into here, and then I'm sliding it into the fitting here. Now what will happen is when I put my privacy curtain rod up, it will just turn and it will just go up snug against this and actually hold it in even better. So if you don't have a sunroof to clip it to over here, what you can do is you can still just work off of this, uh, this light fixture here. So you, I just took a simple angle bracket and just shoved it up in there tight and this is really sturdy and you could put another one on the other side and then you could take your bracket and you could fit that different ways. You could do uh, clips or something and you could bend that and you could get a nice fitting with that. Um, so that's another way to do it. You could even try pushing these depending on what your situation is. These might even go right up in there for you if you work them in depending on how it goes up into the ceiling. So I've closed off my curtain. I've darkened it out in here. I've put up the full size board and so we'll turn off the light. And there is our picture and it looks like it's going to be able to fill up the entire back. It is upside down but I'll fix that later in the settings menu. So this ends part one and I'll post part two. You can click on the link right here on the screen and jump over to the video for part two and we'll pick up where we left off. In part two we're going to bring build the screen cover, put the material over that, we're going to mount the screen, make the brackets, put the brackets up. We're going to set up the projector, we're going to demonstrate pictures, a movie, how to do the different sources for your phone, for the uh, for the USB and the SD card and also we'll go over proper powering to make sure that this thing doesn't shut off on you in the middle of the movie. So let's pick up where we left off on part two.